So it's time to start, I think. And uh, do you see the uh, the slide, opening slide? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then, so thank you very much for joining this uh, panel. And um, so the, uh, the the title of the panel is Culture Metadata. And uh, for what culture entities are we creating metadata? And uh, the background is that, so the, we are doing the digital curation and archiving, and uh, the area of the curation and archiving are expanding to many new domains. And the uh, panelists will bring ideas and experiences on the metadata for cultural entities in various domains. For example, the uh, Japanese popular culture and uh, Thai, say the Sea Gypsies, the language, and then databases and so on. And so the content, the domains could be intangible and uh, ephemeral. So we need to think a new way to curate and archive those resources and a new type of metadata will be required. So in, the, in this panel, we will discuss metadata issues for this archiving of various cultural entities for further research and the research in the future and development of metadata. So the very short agenda, the presentations and uh, the presentations first and about one hour by four presenters and comments from two commentators and then followed by open discussion. And here we have the four panelists, Tetsuya Mihara, <clears throat> Japanese popular culture from Japan, and Song Fan Chun Prayon, archiving tribal languages in Thailand, and the Chiranti Vijay Sundra uh, from Sri Lanka, and the data model for intangible cultural heritage. And Aki Kameda, about the metadata for collaborative development of research data information in the humanities. And we have two distinguished commentators, Harald Kler from Taiwan and Cora Golov from Sweden. So before we start, I'd like to say some questions, basic questions. What entities are we curating and archiving? So for example, the, how do you archive fireworks, artistic event or physical object? So actually it is not easy to keep the original fire in archives. And uh, traditional dance as an intent cultural heritage, do we archive dance skills or performance or performance recordings? Mm and the research data in the humanities. Data set as a single entity or data set as an archive or research. So the traditionally, uh, conventionally, the, uh, the uh, memory institutions have developed metadata schemes, which are quite item centric. But uh, in this panel, I like to discuss whether the item centric metadata is quite nice for those new domains. Okay, so for example, we cannot collect live performances, but they're recordings. Recordings are items, but uh, live performances may not be an item. So that is a very basic question with myself. So that I'd like to introduce the first panelist. Mihara. And uh, I think you can share your slide by yourself. Yes. But let me stop the uh, my sharing. And uh, you have 15 minutes, but uh, that 15 minutes includes some short QA time. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, can you share my voice and uh, uh, yes. See the slides, okay, no problem. Yes. Okay, uh, okay, let's start. My name is Tetsuya Mihara. Th uh, thank you for the coming the 
uh, this panel. And uh, today I'm talking to introduce our project to develop database of uh, Japanese pop culture media. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is my uh, brief self introduction. Uh, I am, uh, I have a, an art of jobs or the works, but uh, maybe. I, my current uh, work is uh, metadata designing or the metadata developing. And uh, media database, MADB uh, is uh, the unique national database for media art produced in Japan. And now I'm talking about this project. The uh, media, media art uh, uh, is a different uh, meaning of the new media art or the media art in English. This is not general term. And uh, the term is defined by the Japanese law to facilitate not only traditional culture, but also the modern pop culture by the government. Uh, so the, the I, I can say this concept nearly equals to the manga, anime game and pop culture pop art and the digital art. And uh, uh, so the database consists of four categories uh, for representative media of media art, manga, anime, animation, anime, said anime, and uh, video game, and uh, new media art. And uh, uh, this database is developed to collect data to cover information of media art produced in Japan. Uh, it has bibliographies about over 480,000 uh, manga books and magazines, 9,000 anime series, 48,000 video game titles. Uh, the one of the uh, main motivation of the project is to clarify overall picture of media resources because uh, Media resources are less collected and archived. Uh, for example, in the case of manga, uh, it shows uh, the ratio of collected manga book by National Diet Library, which is a Japanese uh, unique uh, national archive of books. The only about 60% manga books are collected the, uh, at, the, at the library. However, the, uh, to add the collection of special library of manga in Japan, the, uh, the ratio is increasing over 80 to over 80 percent. So uh, the database development start, started to gather cataloging records of libraries and museums which have media art collection. This is a concept image to represent the mission and the services of MADB. And it describes the, that the media, MADB is aggregation of media art metadata, that they correct uh, the metadata from resource holder and the right holders, and uh, uh, the aggregate and the create the links of entities with each other and the produce to the users. Yeah. To aggregate the vari vari uh, variety types of the data from different collections, the content-centric metadata is very important. The uh, data from collection uh, is mainly based on the physical object, as you know, but uh, the users of media, uh, pop culture, media art, uh, don't care about this. Uh, the common interests focus on the content, narrative, and intellectual topics uh, on the physical object. So the data model of MADB has both aspect, item-centric and content-centric, and need to link them. Uh, this picture is the structure of the media MADB abstract model. The uh, bottom half area is uh, the item-centric entities. 
the core entity is item uh, which shows the physical embodiment of media art resources. And the bottom, uh, top half uh, is uh, the content-centric entities. The, this, uh, these core entities are the works and the variation. The works is, uh, is the entities uh, like this picture. Maybe you can understand it easy, easily. And the variation is a uh, variation represents the different types of expression or the appearance of work. It is a unit of content represents uh, represented by a set of items. Now uh, I'll show briefly at the concrete model for the each categories. This is a model for manga. Uh, this model represents a common pub, uh, the common Common publication pattern of manga, almost manga published in a magazine by an episode with other works first, then republished our book to correct some episode, uh, said Tankobon or the paperback. So it, this duration of entity shows these durations. This is a model for anime, and the publication pattern of anime is quite similar to uh, that of manga. So the model is also similar. Uh, this is a model for video game. The uh, video game is simpler than manga and anime because uh, they have the diff uh, they have a difference of the uh, types of media, uh, but uh, they don't have the less difference of the types of uh, distribution uh, me media. Uh, for example, almost uh, they distributed as a, uh, the software of the console, uh, the game console. But the characteristic of this, uh, these categories the a work of video game has many variations for each game platform. For example, the we can play Super Mario uh, on the NES and the SNES on the other game platform, the very maybe the greatest ones, Nintendo Switch or and so on. And uh, they have they it, they are the same works we can say, it, but that different items. So we need to describe these relations. There are the, some uh, challenging topics of metadata, uh, of metadata in me media art projects. The, uh, we need to create the uh, yeah, metadata for content-centric ent entities. We can easily to correct the item-centric one because the uh, item holder uh, the make, uh, would make this. But the content-centric met metadata is sometimes not. And uh, uh, we, we also take care of not only the uh, physical item, uh, the package, the not, uh, but also the digital item, especially the bomb digital one. And uh, of course, uh, we, we must uh, design the uh, data uh, development pipeline, not only the metadata model. Uh, and the uh, data aggregation is always uh, complex. At last, the uh, the LOD data set uh, in the media data MADB is uh, available. Uh, unfortunately, it is only in Japanese. If you have any interest to this data set or this project, ask me very freely. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And um, so the, thank you very much. And I'd like to move on to the next panelist, Song Fan. Hi. Okay, please. Okay. okay, thank you. 
Um, let me share my screen. And hello, everyone. Um, I'm Song Han Chambrion from the Department of Library Science at the Long Kong University in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, this is also a work in progress. Um, it's been five years uh, in, this pro in this journey. Um, so in this presentation, I would like to share my experience and lesson learned um, from the project that we've been trying to preserve and revitalize um, an endangered language of the CGPC uh, ethnic group in the southern part of Thailand. Um, when we talk about cultural heritage here in this sense, I will uh, expand um, a little bit more when uh, the highlight of the key term is preservation and revitalization. Um, let me put uh, a little bit of context here that um, there are a number of sea gypsies living along the coast and offshore uh, throughout a varied path, varied path of um, Southeast Asia region. And the group that, are, uh, that we are working on is uh, a minority ethnic group called Mo Glen uh, in Taptawan village in Panga, which is very close to Phuket, if you know the geography of, 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 of Thailand. Um, um, several minority, minority groups um, living on the Andaman coast, including this group of people, have been brought into attention to the society, uh, especially in Thailand, uh, after the great tsunami in 2004, um, where they are at risk of unable to reclaim their properties uh, due to the lack of acknowledgments of their identity and socio-political status from the government. Um, this project is a part of a larger initiative to collect uh, cultural heritage and document them and, uh, the, uh, in the community uh, of the Malkin community. Um, and this is also a part of a social movement um, to advocate uh, the recognitions of the identity of this ethnic group, um, especially from the cultural perspective. The Moklan people have unique distinctive um, cultural heritage in both tangible and intangible forms, um, including the architectural uh, knowledge of coastal construction and establishments, um, the unique local melody and choreography of local dance, um, the domestic lifestyle, which is very primarily based on how to live on and by the sea, and the storytelling that carry out um, the spiritual belief and collective value of the community. Um, but we found that um, all of these cultural heritage objects are very highly embedded in the distinctive language that use in the community. Um, Moklan is considered as a language uh, in danger because it's spoken, uh, is, it is a spoken language with uh, approximately only uh, 6,000 speaker and the number of speaker is declining. Um, only senior people speak the language and the younger generation use Thai or Southern Thai, um, which uh, dominant language in the area. Um, through, uh, although the language is similar to those uh, of the sibling groups, um, but they are still unique. So uh, 6,000 is still very small. Uh, as a part of the initiative to preserve and revitalize the language, uh, a couple of primary school in the nearby neighborhoods are teaching more lands. However, um, due to the strict qualifications requirement of the government, um, the teachers, uh, most teachers are non-native speaker. Uh, so there are a lot of challenges in preserving and, uh, the language and cultural heritage as a whole. Um, as you may realize that the collections and documentation alone may not be sufficient to preserve and revitalize the cultural heritage in this context, particularly those in intangible form. The language and oral traditions can survive through immersions and diffusions approach um, where these intangible heritage uh, should be used and understood by community at large and acknowledged by the government and society outside the community. So we start the project with an uh, ethnographic data collection in which we visit several people in the community to learn about their lifestyles, traditions, and languages. Um, in some cases, we follow them in observing how they work. Um, the linguistic uh, researcher teams conduct uh, language probes during the interview to document the language in several um, forms. Um, during the language probes, uh, the researcher asks the community members to identify terms referring to particular concepts and objects. Uh, in order to lessen the insertion of outsider perspective, uh, the researcher avoid asking for a direct translation Instead, the participant were asked to an open-end questions format or a visual cue, for example, like pointing to this and ask what this is, what do you call? So, so um, the team 
visit community several times in the past five years, and we have collected and created an abundance of digital objects, uh, including image and videos, and audio recording, um, as well as researcher few notes. But if you can see from the, this table, um, you can see that researchers have a substantial roles in contributing to these objects in numerous ways. So when it comes to um, metadata modeling, we have been trying to describe not only the characteristic of the digital collections and concept uh, or the object or the items uh, representing this object, um, but we are real aware highly in terms of the role of the events and performance. So if you can see that uh, when we uh, do the modeling of this uh, of metadata set, uh, we we kind of uh, aim it to be a performance centric rather than the item centric or um, the conceptual centric. Um, for example, when we talk about the particular object, um, we cannot uh, identify the object directly in our language, but we have to identify true language probes or visiting uh, and asking them to identify it for us. So um, that's why all the um, concept even intangible or tangible form it has to be realized into uh, in the the, uh, the interview or problem session um so we found that the idea of revitalizations of spoken language among the outsider is ideal but very challenging um as one could imagine that the difficulty of us learning a new language of a new foreign language in a very distant environment or culture um, so the conceptualized and contextualizations of vocabulary is very unique among the community members. Um, so, so what we, the first output that we are working on is the development of Mauglen Thai English Dictionary, uh, which contains Mauglen words, pronunciation symbols in standard IPA system, definition, example uses, and related audio and images. Uh, in hope that uh, the dictionary can be used in multiple, by multiple stakeholders. Um, so the data structure that we are using um, is pretty much the dictionary uh, uh, model structure that we adopt from the dictionary writing system, um, which uh, is compatible with most dictionary development applications. We are also considering um, using the TEI Lex Zero, uh, which recently updated. Um, so it could be so to enhance the interoperability of this data set in a larger context. Um, but as Mauglen has a no writing system, as you can see that even though it's a dictionary based and we're trying to use Mauglen, but when they don't have the diction, when we don't have the writing system, relying heavily on listening to an audio sound can be problematic in terms of reli uh, reliability. Um, so, uh, so we decide to develop an orthography um, based on Thai alphabet system um, to be used in the dictionary. So, and, and it could be used in one of the main access point for cultural heritage database and archives. Um, so we chose Thai as opposed to English because the majority of the younger generation use Thai and as official language. Um, so um, the development of orthography become another realization in our research teams uh, in the sense that there could be various alternatives of the geo orthography system for Mauglen. For example, you can use English orthography to describe Mauglen as well. So the metadata that link between cultural instance and Mauglen vocabulary should um, include the orthographic realization you know, of the term that are used. So as you can see on the left side of this presentation. So here come to my last slide. Um, in this presentation, um, we show example of the performance or event-based model providing a strong connection between cultural heritage in the form of oral traditions and linguistic features and the development um, uh, with an awareness of the role of recorder and researchers as an outsider. Um, the practices of adopting and describing cataloging standard from a dominant culture has been discussed more increasingly in the literature, especially on in the topic of colonialism of metadata. Uh, for example, the idea of romanizations of non-Roman uh, cataloging records or things like that. Um, with the digital collections of endangered culture, cultural heritage, where uh, the involvement of outsider is strongly present, uh, the process of metadata modeling, including identification of metadata entity, uh, should be include the influences of outsider perspective 
Um, so this would help the practice that uh, respect the community member members um, and also help sustain and revive the cultural heritage while preventing semantic loss as much as possible. And that's it from my presentation. Thank you for your attention. So oh, thank you very much. So the, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to input on the chat box. So the, actually, I, I have a very simple question. Is the sure. Moklan language a kind of, a, is it an independent language or a dialect of some other language group? Um, it is, well, I mean, if you can see from the earlier slide, the it's astro relations language. It's not related, it's not close to Thai. And the it's quite independent, so quite alienated for us. Um, there's there's no sharing root of the language for us. So uh, uh, so people who, who are um, outsider mostly have, have to learn them quite extensively. Yeah, so that I also know that uh, in Indonesia, there are quite many also, endangered languages. So the, yeah. are there any collaborative activity for those, the uh, archiving, the, for the archiving of those un, uh, endangered languages in that region? Okay, um, so far we, we know who are working on, for example, there are a lot in, um, in New Zealand um, area, um, there are a lot in um, Australia. And in Indonesia also have, have a strong presence in terms of digital archives in, uh, in, in indigenous language. Um, but however, we haven't really um, had uh, collaborations uh, strongly in, in this area. And I think um, more and more discussions because there are now um, an increasing number of scholars working in this area. Yeah. But um, yeah, currently we don't have it yet. Um, although even though they're in Thailand, we also have a digital archives of, of, of uh, endangered languages as well. But um, the level of collaborations are not that, uh, that very high. Um, Cora has a question. May I answer Cora questions? Yes, please. Uh, in your research, has the challenge of reporting oral culture using written media comes up? Um, or was it considered welcome? Um, I uh, so I, I guess um, in terms of writing system, or I'm not quite sure the question of of, of Cora question. <laughs> Maybe could you help me clarify the question? <laughs> Is it okay if I speak? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I was just thinking, um, I remember discussions from um, earlier conferences, and sometimes it was shown a challenge that when we want to approach oral cultures with recording them, like in digital media, that then maybe the oral tradition loses itself, and then some may find it kind of intrusive. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just wondering if you had any issues like that yes. or was it just really welcome that you can now preserve it through uh, the new media yes um we consider that very very um very cautiously when we start the project so we, we enter the community without any digital recording we, we we enter them just to get to know them just to learn them for a while so we enter we living with them for weeks just to get to know and get gain their trust and then because um, they are a lot, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, especially this particular group of, of ethnic group, they have political issues and social um, political agenda. So they were aware of, you know, like the sense of safety uh, of who would come to get the information. So we have to gain to uh, kind of gain their trust uh, before recording and before documenting anything um, just to, you know, like make, make sure that everything we are trying to do just to help them not to, you know, like promoting else, what else, uh, something else. Yeah. But thank you for your excellent question. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, if no questions, then the, uh, are there any new questions arrived? No? Let me check. 
Okay, so then let me move on to the next presentation by Akiranti Vijasundra from Sri Lanka. She is a librarian at the University of Colombo. Then, please. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, so our panel is on cultural heritage metadata, as you know. Uh, so in this presentation, uh, I am going to introduce you some models uh, designed for uh, archiving uh, cultural heritage objects, uh, basically uh, on the web. Uh, so uh, also we are trying to give some special emphasis for the uh, intangible cultural heritage uh, because it's a uh, uh, Specially uh, designed for that. So, uh, as Professor introduced, I'm uh, Chiranti Vijay Sundra. I am uh, representing University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. So, let's see what uh, I have uh, today. First, I would like to introduce uh, what do you mean by uh, cultural heritage because it's our uh, main theme. Uh, according to UNESCO, cultural heritage of a community is the memory of its living culture. So it's exhibit uh, how these uh, cultures uh, evolve in the past, and it's really important for a society. Uh, and uh, these uh, entities can be material or immaterial. So material things are basically like monuments, landscapes, objects, uh, which can be kept in museum or something like that. But uh, when it comes to immaterial things, uh, it can be language, uh, rituals, craft, music, dance, uh, something different. So we uh, distinguish this as a tangible and intangible cultural heritage in the domain. Uh, so when it comes to intangible cultural heritage, we identify it as a very unique uh, thing. And it's really, really diverse. We call it heterogeneous uh, because uh, Unlike tangible objects, uh, intangible cultural heritage, as you uh, understand, it cannot be touched and they exist within a given space and time. So it is short term actually. And when it comes to capturing these uh, uh, intangible cultural heritage, it's really uh, uh, difficult sometimes, uh, very challenging. And also when it comes to identifying an intangible cultural heritage, uh, it's, it creates various problems sometimes because it is uh, mostly connected with the living society and the natural environment, of course. And uh, another thing is uh, cultural heritage is most of the time modified over time. So you can't uh, see the, uh, the very original intangible cultural heritage if you try to figure it out in the present day. So likewise, intangible cultural heritage is really diverse and heterogeneous. So when it comes to information related to these things also really uh, heterogeneous. So uh, we have uh, the second thing we uh, investigated for the uh, information on the web, basically digital archives. Uh, in that uh, uh, case, we, we were in a question like, what objects should be digitally archived in the case of intangible cultural heritage? Are we going to, uh, archive the object itself or their recording. So likewise, we have this uh, kind of uh, uh, problem uh, when it comes to uh, archiving intangible culture. So we are trying to give some solutions uh, for those things. And also we identified the digital archives uh, representations, the items they are uh, represent to, through their archives are mostly item centric. Uh, but uh, when it comes to users, they need some more uh, content-oriented information. So when you take an item, uh, there may be so many information related to that item, we are not which are not connected. Uh, they uh, just uh, stay on the web. So the models are trying to address that also. It is sometimes hybrid, uh, we call it, they are not adhere to the one-to-one -one principle of metadata. Uh, so uh, those things are the uh, problems we have discovered and we are trying to give some answers from our model. So the first model we uh, created uh, based on those uh, issues were 
CHDE model, Cultural Heritage and Digital Environment model. So uh, CHDE model uh, mainly identify, it try to distinguish the digital and uh, physical space of a cultural heritage uh, object and its information. Uh, so CHI means cultural heritage information. And also it gives a special consideration on intangible cultural heritage and it try to uh, identify it using an uh, entity called instantiation. So this instantiation is uh, very important uh, in order to identify intangible cultural heritage and it is created on some, several uh, entities like temporal location category. Uh, so uh, we call them classes actually. So, uh, so these classes also map to CDOC, CRM, and Fabaru uh, ontologies to make a formalization. So that's how we created the instantiation uh, for the intangible heritage. So CHD basically uh, try to aggregate resources on the web, and it is a very generalized model. So let's see what you mean by this model. So this is a simplified uh, version of the CHD model. So you can see two things, uh, two sides. Uh, first uh, part, the left side part, you can see TCH object uh, in the bottom. Uh, TCH is tangible cultural heritage object. So you know it can be captured in many ways like uh, as digital things or some uh, physical recording, which can be uh, digitally uh, converted in digital phase and then can be uh, collected into as a curated digital instance uh, on the top part, sorry. Uh, then we have right side. Right side, we have intangible cultural heritage. As you know, if ICA is intangible, we cannot uh, uh, directly uh, record or uh, uh, capture. In that case, we created those instantiation like uh, entities. So that, uh, uh, that, for example, it can be a uh, specific event happen on a specific day. So uh, that particular instantiation can be recorded and captured and then can be uh, converted into digital object and can be uh, collected in the curated digital instance here in the upper part. So, uh, so all these curated digital instances are representing this tangible or intangible cultural heritage in the physical world. So uh, finally, this uh, combination of these curated digital instances can be collected into digital archive. So I would like to show this example uh, using an example. So this, uh, I use uh, Sri Lankan festival, which is uh, very vibrant and uh, uh, cultural event. So I have chosen only the digital uh, space, the, the upper part of the CHD model. You can see all the uh, some digital items which were aggregated as curated digital instance. Uh, so the ash color oval is curated digital instance. Uh, so here the, the festival, the Candy Asala Perhal festival uh, was uh, instantiated as a one, uh, performance performed in 2016. So we have collected some resources related to that uh, specific instantiation, like a photo, video, or schedule related to that. And this set of uh, resources can be aggregated into the CDI, the top most uh, portion. And uh, as you know, this curated digital instance is a collection of digital resources and their descriptions representing a single cultural heritage entity, right? So uh, other than these uh, resources, it can have, uh, it can aggregate descriptions related to the original object and their metadata and also some other links like Wikipedia articles or news article into the same. So you can see it's not a item, uh, only a single item, it's a combination of items and also it is uh, representing some content so it's like a package so that is uh, what we represent uh, what we present through chde model then uh, we have uh, created another model called ceda model called concepts embodiment and uh, digital archives so uh, that is also a framework for modeling entities that appear in digital archiving process the real world objects 
archive digital objects and their relationships. So they, the CEDA model is trying to distinguish all these things uh, in the real world, conceptual world, and the archival process. So uh, actually, the CA, CEDA model is uh, uh, still under discussion. So uh, I'm going to present some something out of that. So when you take uh, entities in cultural and historical domains, uh, basically you can see two things like uh, conceptual or the knowledge world, the top, uh, top things, and the bottom part is kind of embodied world or the physical or digital end. So all these things are in the, uh, when you take historical domains, all these things are connected together. So uh, when you take the bottom side, the physical or the embodied world, uh, even an intangible a thing, intangible performance can be happen in the physical world. So we can say it's an embodied thing. And also the uh, objects related to the performance like flags or some other objects can be, uh, uh, ca can be exist in the embodied world. Then we have tangible objects. Basically things like uh, museum objects or monuments, all these things are in the physical world. Then uh, also there are certain things like disaster, war, or certain events uh, which related to historical or cultural. All these things are happening in the embodied world. Then we have uh, upper part that is kind of abstract, which is uh, more higher level. So if you take a skill, knowledge, community memory, all these tacit kind of knowledge things are uh, exist in this conceptual world. Somehow, all these things can can have descriptions, and also if you take embodied world, it can have recordings, and also description, and recordings itself can have description or metadata. So uh, when it comes to uh, archiving these things, uh, digital archive should consist of all this information, the descriptions, their uh, metadata, recordings and so on. So uh, that is the idea. So here I uh, extracted a, uh, one portion from the CDA model actually, because we have time constraint. So uh, you can see again two uh, levels in this diagram. Upper level is conceptual intangible things. Then the lower level is embodied tangible things. So if we go from the upper level, you can see two entities. One is Gion Matsuri, which is a conceptual object. So Gion Matsuri is a festival in Japan. Uh, so it's the conceptual entity. Uh, from that Gion Matsuri, there can be several uh, uh, festivals which happen in several occasions. So and one single uh, such uh, occasion is Gion Matsuri in 2019. So all these things happen in the conceptual uh, level. Then uh, from the Gion Matsuri and the main entity or the Gion Matsuri happened in 2019, we can derive embodied uh, objects. For example, from the Gion Matsuri main concept, uh, we can have, uh, we can make a link to an article written about Gion Matsuri, which, which is an embo um, embodied perpetual uh, entity. So uh, that is one thing. Then from the Gion Matsuri 2019 uh, conceptual thing, uh, we can uh, again derive uh, an embodied uh, thing called Gion Matsuri 2009 as an instantiation. So this instantiation is kind of ephemeral. That means it is uh, it exists uh, in given a, given a certain time and space, uh, but it exists in the tangible world. And this can be recorded as the embodiment, a video of the Gion Matsuri in 2019. So likewise, we can distinguish all these uh, entities in the uh, conceptual and embodied world. So CEDA is basically doing that. So, uh, so uh, as a whole, if you take CHDE model and the CEDA model, both are trying to give some uh, approach to organize uh, cultural heritage information in a uh, 
most uh, more proper way and also it allows to occur intangible cultural heritage as a collection of recordings uh, and their objects and also their description so it's a combination uh, something like a content so as i earlier said uh, unlike uh, conventional digital archives we are trying to give some a uh, content oriented approach rather than item centric information organization and also these two models are trying to distinguish certain levels of uh, uh, entities which are related to cultural heritage objects which can be tangible or intangible so those are the main things we have uh, defined uh, through these models and we have published some of the uh, publications uh, based on our models. Uh, I have listed them here. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you. Okay, sure. thank you very much. And then let me move on to the last panelist, Akiro Kameda. Can, can you see and see my person? Yes. yes. Okay, and I'm the last panelist, Akiro Kameda from National Museum of the Japanese History and Kyoto University. Uh, uh, I will introduce and uh, explain about the case study of the data model of research resources. That project is uh, called RD, RSDA. Uh, I'm working with uh, Professor Sugimoto and uh, other um, panelists uh, here and uh, it's about the process of finding and defining for what entities are we creating metadata uh, i want to ins insist some point uh, abstract concept is important i know and item centric curation is also important so in this uh, presentation i will uh, describe an inductive process of building a data model and that we will be efficient way of uh, uh, practical data model. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, I, I, I put to the, this URL later, uh, URL later, but in the chat, uh, this is a project data, uh, website. And uh, the RSDA is a community for uh, sharing the research resources in Southeast Asia and East Asia. And uh, uh, yeah, this institute and uh, 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 participating in. And uh, we uh, list up the many uh, data set uh, related to the uh, Southeast Asia and East Asia. And we implement the such interface or uh, the descriptive interface of those resources. And so the central uh, yeah, point of this uh, project is uh, building the inventory database of those resources. And so we uh, ag aggregate uh, uh, information uh, of each data set from each web, web pages. And uh, each web page explains the database or data set of re research data. So yeah, today's topic is how we can make a data model of these target. This target means uh, research data or research data set. And this is, uh, I'll show some examples of website of the data sets. And this is uh, one example, which is of uh, digital collections and uh, the each items are listed uh, in this part. And uh, you can search items here. And uh, uh, yeah, you can use those items in your research or uh, yes, yeah, some kind of activities. This is another example. Uh, the, this is uh, this is a, uh, called uh, uh, research sorry uh, research data repositories, and uh, yeah, specifically they, this is uh, of data bars, and uh, this kind of website hosts a list of uh, downloadable files and uh, their descript descriptions. So, for describing the describing this kind of uh, data sets we developed the metadata model and in each inventory entry uh, will describe a data set and uh, I, we found that many of the data sets have uh, 
uh, some kind of target to describe. And this example is a digital collection of uh, magazines in Malay uh, world and this data set of magazines. And this is another example, which is a field node databases. So a researcher um, takes a field node and we digitize that kind of field node and that can, can be retrieved or from the uh, interface. So the, in this data set, the target of description is a field node itself. So maybe there is a target of the data set. So uh, we put source object as a, a target of the data set. And uh, uh, we uh, make uh, some ent 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 entities around those uh, key uh, like entities, but yeah, the core core entity is a data set and the source object and its description. So in this process, we made the, this data model uh, with in, introspective way. I, I mean, we consider uh, what I what I mean I am writing or what uh, I am describing and uh, uh, making a data model with discussion also. And uh, the behind of this process, and there's an assumption we should know and share the single model implicitly. So yeah, I'll skip uh, this slide. The, this, these are the uh, example of a, a cataloging process. So we write metadata in Google Spreadsheet. And uh, uh, yeah, we started to migrate to Wikidata uh, those uh, inventory entries. So, and the, the feature of Wikidata is uh, that a lot of entities, uh, not, not only the classes and the instances, but also the properties. Uh, the pro there, there are thousands of properties uh, they already have, like narrative location, uh, depends on software or official website or kind of properties. And uh, they provide a liquid data functionality so we can uh, check how we can re retrieve each item with Spark queries, like this. The, this is a visualization of a uh, data set which is related with some special area. And so, in the process of uh, re re uh, yeah, rebuilding the dat data entries, uh, many data set is have uh, many classes. I mean, the data set is a kind of database or some, sometimes a digital collection. And sometimes that is, that is uh, in, uh, the, yeah. Search, search website for a multiple uh, data sets and that is uh, called a uh, web portal also. So there are, there are various classes and various properties also. Uh, many, many of them have a instance of pro, uh, relationship and the main subject pro relationship or so on, but uh, not all, but I mean, some, some of the data sets have a correction collection create a relationship or maintained by relationship or such kind of thing. So we can have a st statistics of those properties. And the important thing is that we can make a, a data model from that kind of various uh, classes or various uh, properties is a concept made of union a U is a kind of symbol, a mathematical symbol of union. And uh, uh, for, for making this map, map, inter, uh, map visualization, we aggregate the many classes like, like in this uh, query. This is an uh, aggregation of uh, uh, some, some classes, register library and digital archive and so on. And then the second, this P area, we, we aggregate the properties, narrative location and the main subject. Some, some data set uh, uh, treat some location as a narrative location and 
other uh, trait that the provocation as main subject. So we can we have to aggregate that kind of properties to uh, retrieve the or, or, or what what we want to uh, get. And so the query with detail property of the target concept is also available. Uh, the this uh, Q604 blah 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 is a digital collection, and this collection has a topic uh, related with uh, performance performing ads. This kind of query can retrieve uh, this this kind of data sets. Uh, the Wyan and the Kabuki is a uh, it it those are the performing ads. Uh, first one is uh, of Indonesia, and the second one is of Japan, and in, this kind of uh, structure uh, helps us to retrieve uh, this data set with uh, this abstract concept. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, the last slide. Uh, from example to the model, from uh, its, its inspection to uh, induction, the, we can make a uh, uh, data model based on the uh, each items. So we have to make uh, many item centric curation, and uh, based on that we can uh, make make a data model uh, with a process of aggregation and visualization. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So questions? Any questions? So the, actually, the, let me add the, the, some background about it, the RSDA project. So the RSDA project was uh, how say, organized by a uh, research institute for Southeast Asian studies at Kyoto University. So the, I was, I've been involved in this project and uh, the motivation of this project is that uh, this, uh, actually the RSDA stands for the research small data. So the, the, in the humanities, there are lots of the small size databases and data set, but uh, they are endangered. So they, we should collect those small research data and keep them available online. That was the motivation of the project. And so the, we have been collecting the data, but on the other hand, Kometa, the Aki Kameda is trying to connect the content to the Wikidata. Okay, so questions, any questions, no questions? So there is a question from Haran. Yeah, uh, I think in the last uh, slide, uh, Kameda Sensei uh, says uh, item-centric curation is important. But in our uh, case, ISDA inventory, uh, the item-centric curation should be the responsibility of underlying data sets, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, item, item level, uh, I mean, yeah, that is a dependent perspective. Uh, in the RSDA uh, project, item is uh, each data set, not, not okay. the uh, each entry of each data set. So uh, yeah, in this panel, we discuss about the, uh, the, the abstract part of the uh, concept, but uh, I, I, I mean, the in, yeah, for, for example, in the intangible uh, heritage, we have to create the, each recordings or such kind of uh, each uh, phys physical uh, data. Yeah, uh, that 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 can can be helpful for this describe the what what we, we are ri writing what we are describing. So the, that uh, yeah, in in the context of RSD, the item is data sets. Okay. Yeah. So the actually the, I think uh, the the term item itself is not very clear. So that is the problem in this domain, I think. So the, we had uh, lots of the discussion about the definition of the concepts and also terms. 
Okay. If there is no question, then so thank you very much for the all panelists, and uh, I'd like to move on to the comments from the our commentators. So the first commentator is a uh, Hao Renke from National Taiwan Normal University in Taiwan. Um, may I share my slides? Yes, please. Um, okay. So uh, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think uh, all uh, uh, panelists uh, give us very wonderful and uh, inspiring uh, talk. Uh, and uh, I think all the presentations uh, covers entity from uh, conceptual to uh, tangible. Um, and uh, which means uh, all the, it uh, seems to me all the project uh, contains uh, entity from uh, content, uh, uh, content centric to item centric. Uh, and uh, we have to uh, be very careful about uh, which uh, entity uh, we want to uh, describe. Um, but uh, because our uh, all the presentation, the, the, the entity uh, cover from conceptual to tem uh, tangible, uh, it means uh, we have to build an uh, information model or structure or hierarchy to describe the uh, concept, uh, conceptual to tangible uh, relationship. Uh, and uh, I think from the four presentations, the relations are very complex and uh, various. Here I uh, list uh, uh, some uh, example from the four uh, presentation. Uh, for example, CDA, we have a, a conceptual uh, entity, uh, Guillaume Masuri, and uh, we have a tangible uh, entity, uh, article or video on uh, Guillaume Masuri. Uh, and the uh, uh, ISDA and the NADA, uh, MADB uh, have similar uh, similar uh, situation. And uh, uh, I'm thinking uh, the the further, uh, although it is for the uh, published um, work or published product, but I think further also has the uh, hierarchy or information model from work. Uh, the upper level is very uh, conceptual, and the, to the manifestation and the item level are very uh, tangible or very uh, concrete. And uh, I think Chiranti uh, mentioned about uh, maybe our model may not uh, follow the one-to-one -one principle. And uh, it just uh, uh, jumped into my mind because uh, in the uh, metadata design, uh, we have some kind of uh, collection level or group level metadata uh, and the uh, metadata for individual item. So I think uh, the convention, uh, the collection level or group uh, group level metadata may be applied to the uh, content centric uh, entities. Okay, uh, another interesting uh, thing coming to my mind is the, the follow uh, folklore thing of uh, folk tale. Uh, I think in uh, Taiwan, China, Japan, uh, we have some uh, folklore, uh, very similar, uh, folklore, for example, the uh, heaven uh, fairy legend or the white crane repays. So, uh, if uh, if I follow the idea from uh, FRBR Ferber, uh, Ferber, and we can we can uh, see the first level is work, the second level is expression, uh, and the, in the uh, folklore. Uh, example, we can see uh, the the upper layer is the folklore work. And uh, we have uh, different variant uh, variants, which may uh, even in Japan, I know there are several versions of uh, heaven fairy legend. Uh, not to mention uh, across the uh, across the country, uh, and uh, uh, below the variants, there will be something more uh, concrete. For example, novel and uh, drama. So uh, I think we, uh, although in different application, we still uh, in conquer a uh, very similar situation from the uh, abstract or conceptual things to the uh, concrete or tangible things. Uh, another an another uh, interesting is also uh, mentioned by uh, Chiranti, uh, can we or should we 
uh, describe a uh, skill or knowledge. Uh, in Chiranti's talk, uh, uh, she mentioned there are many web resources uh, about uh, for, uh, about uh, intangible cultural heritage, for example, a uh, richer. Uh, but uh, as far as I see, uh, I think all these uh, kinds of, of information, for example, subject headings, resource, uh, or dictionary, or uh, encyclopedia, even Wikipedia, uh, are to uh, their content are very uh, general introduction, not in very, uh, not very in depth. So uh, in this way, I'm thinking uh, to, uh, if we want to preserve or archive intangible uh, heritage, cultural heritage, uh, do we need uh, archive a very detailed uh, skill or knowledge, for example, uh, ceremony steps or uh, sacrificial uh, offering. Uh, so here I, I, I give you uh, one example. That's uh, the research conducted by uh, my, my student. Uh, there is a, a local ritual called uh, Lang Jun Ji. Uh, so you can uh, see uh, there are uh, some ritual ceremony and even the uh, sacrificial offering uh, this one is more detailed. So maybe each sacrificial offering has uh, its own meaning uh, to the richer. Uh, and uh, do we need to uh, describe land? Uh, and I think uh, more, um, most of this information uh, can be uh, elicited from oral his, uh, history or uh, interview, uh, like uh, 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 some fans cases, uh, but do we need uh, to uh, describe them or also or just uh, use the um, document or a uh, general description to describe them? Uh, so uh, I think uh, previously I, I discussed with Shigeo Sensei about is it some kinds of uh, knowledge man man management? This is what I mean. Do we uh, need to uh, uh, extract the information uh, and convert the task information, uh, task knowledge to explicit knowledge. So uh, another 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 thing I um, uh, recently uh, because of this this panel, I I uh, think the, about the uh, fireworks and the traditional dance. And uh, you may know uh, in New Zealand uh, Digital Library Greenstone, there is a, a humanity development library. Uh, in this archive. Uh, actually, uh, it uh, documents uh, many uh, traditional uh, craft. Uh, so this is a, a brick making. So uh, that's why, why I say, uh, do we uh, need to uh, archive or uh, describe uh, power, ma uh, uh, power making process in the firework uh, uh, example? Or do we need to archive describe the uh, dancing skill? So finally, uh, I sum, uh, summarize my, my, my thoughts. So uh, I, uh, just I, uh, as I just mentioned, the Wikipedia, uh, encyclopedia, maybe the information to journals. Uh, so uh, is contextual information enough uh, for uh, archiving or preserving intangible uh, cultural heritage? And uh, the second one is how to archive skill or knowledge, and uh, is it is it necessary to archive land? Uh, or we just uh, archive skill knowledge by recordings or document? And uh, uh, I, I think uh, I agree with uh, Tetsuya. Uh, vocabulary is very important uh, to describe the, the relationship because uh, in the presentation, I uh, see many sim uh, similar meaning uh, relation, for example, is realized through uh, instantiate or uh, is re realized. And uh, the second one is the uh, collection group of aggregate, uh, aggregation level metadata. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, so at this time, I, I, I'd like to move on to the next comment from Cora and then start discussion. May I ask you, Cora, to yes, give us a comment? You. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Haran. Uh, thank you, Shigel. Thank you all the panelists for illuminating uh, possible solutions to all these really so far unaddressed uh, complex uh, topics that require data modeling and then metadata and then interfaces for search and access so that we can provide access uh, to these resources to uh, their users. And I think the general public uh, is, is a common user of them all. Um, when we started with uh, Tetsaya's uh, talk, I was just thinking how uh, the different media arts also link to uh, fiction and how fiction that we have had for so long in libraries as maybe primary materials, we still don't always provide them good subject access. So we miss even uh, controlled vocabularies for something that has been really a known uh, document to describe with metadata. So some problems are quite old. And, and um, until we find uh, more international uh, established uh, guidelines or standards, there are projects, there are individual approaches, but not really quite there to uh, encourage wide acceptance and implementation. So uh, I think we all we have an old problem to address, but at the same time, we have these uh, so far almost completely unaddressed challenges that have been presented in these four talks on how to uh, deal with um, subject specific access. So uh, terms, subject keywords, classes, and so forth. Um, then um, we have seen that um, um, endangered cultures and um, indigenous cultures really need uh, to, given, to be given more fair treatment in the way we approach knowledge organization in general. And we have seen and witnessed criticism, self-established knowledge organization systems like geodesimal classification, Library of Congress subject headings, who don't really uh, give it justice and are often biased um, on, based on Western culture. So it's very important uh, to uh, address these because it's the one way to preserve them uh, or one of the ways to preserve these cultures and to provide access to information and also increase um, intercultural understandings in, in the world which we desperately need. Um, also, we have seen uh, the problems of um, capturing intangible cultural heritage and it's a um, really great model that shows how the digital environment can be used to enhance and connect um, the tangible with intangible and use the new media, like the digital environment uh, to do that. But it seems that it's necessary to further involve these knowledge organization standards at the international level to capture these relationships and um, also, as uh, Hauren uh, said, also not just items uh, and knowledge or collections, but also the processes. So I think we need international standards or guidelines um, how to do that. Um, and also in, um, in summary, uh, I was just wondering also maybe as an opening for the discussion, we are uh, we first need the models that for these very complex and varied cultural heritage um, objects. And we really need to um, capture them so as to provide access uh, to information. But then to come from models, um, I guess the next step would be metadata elements. And then the next step, um, user interfaces, all these uh, linking then to users and then who would the users be? Would they be um, within the culture, national? Would they be international? Would they be the typical ones such as researchers or humanities researchers? But could they also be the ones that we haven't predicted? And then how do we reach out to them to identify what kinds of best search access 
interfaces, metadata elements based on these models we could provide. And then my final um, big question um, is whether any international action connected the CMI community with IFLAM, with ICOM, uh, with um, ISCO, et cetera, would be in place because all these issues come at so many different levels that perhaps we can only address jointly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, it, I think uh, it's time to close. And um, I very much thank you all. And uh, so, Tom, is there any word from DCMI? No? Uh, one avenue would, that, that is, um, uh, would be to um, create um, to create an application profile as kind of a um, uh, a first step, and and uh, because the model would would sort of underline that that application profile, and an application profile could be a way of of um, uh, of expressing the uh, the model of of the domain in in a way that um, that pulls in. Um, that relates to, uh, you know, more than one of the um, conceptual models that we've seen. We've seen, you know, work and variant and item, and we've seen, um, of course, WEMI, and we've seen other variants of that are all roughly similar, make similar distinctions, but um, uh, an application profile could um could um emphasize the um uh the properties um uh, that relate uh things um and this could be a way of of approaching um the uh approaching the model uh, the more abstract um uh, um uh, the challenge of creating uh, the more abstract model Thank you. So then okay. I think uh, it's time to close. And so the, thank you very much again. So thank you all. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very speaker. much. I think uh, this is a quite a productive panel. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you.